Hello and welcome to the Ask Weldon Show, episode 90. Today I'm filming in a coffee shop, standing in the back by a table, so if you see people walking by, that's what's going on. And also I gotta talk a little bit quieter. Tomorrow I'm gonna hopefully have my new microphone and my new camera, it's gonna be freaking awesome. And I'm gonna have a amazing vlog locations for you guys. Maybe I'll do what I did early on in my YouTube career. If you check out my videos earlier in my channel, you'll see I'm sometimes out in the woods on a rock. Um, I, I think I found a nice tunnel actually on the way here that I could film tomorrow I was vlogging. Okay, so first question from Cub Cube Destroyer, and they ask, "When I am in a team fight for League of Legends, I find it hard to know who to focus on as a support karma. Do I focus on tanks first or AD carry?" Okay, I think the answer to the question relies so much on your team composition and their team composition because let's say that they have something like an Alistar or somebody who's going to go in on your team then your job as karma if, if like there's nobody else in your team is pretty much to like prevent them from being able to do it like you're really good at that you can shield their target so that they can like outrange them so that they can't get the combo off you can snare uh, the Alistars they come in you can slow them there's all sorts of things that you can do um, to make like engage like engages on your back line like super difficult But let's say they don't have anybody like that then your re relationship changes completely like um, Let's say it's a skirmish like a 3v3 team fight or something then you can be the person to actually initiate um, You can flash over their CC and like chain them um, You have like speed you can use your speed up for yourself and like and keep them in range and get the initial snare So that the follow-up CC can land like you have a lot of engaging tools um, for that purposes yeah, it, it changes so much. So what I would do is I would look at their team composition and I would say, what is the way that they're going to win this team fight? And I would look at your team comp and I would say, what is the way you're going to lose this team fight? Okay, and the, that's the number one order. So you want to do the thing that is going to prevent you guys from losing the team fight and prevent them from winning it. Now, that being said, if you look at your team composition and you see like, oh my gosh, we have a really bad comp. There's no way we can initiate the fight. There's no way that we can like actually like get in on them and like do what we want then you're gonna have to just like say oh well I'm just gonna have to like hope we get lucky and I'm just gonna have to make the play and you want to go be a playmaker okay so in solo queue being a playmaker is like the number one way to climb and to win so you should first of all like I said before analyze the compositions and try to do prevent them from having their win condition while stopping you from having your losing condition and then secondly you should try to be a playmaker you should look at who on um, their team uh, is like susceptible to kind of getting caught or burst out. You should look at who on your team has CC to follow up on you. Then you should wait till they're near you and then you should ping that person. You should go in on them and make the play. And boom, all of a sudden you're winning the game on Support Karma. Okay. Uh, as if you were playing Braum or Alistair or something. Yeah, so that's, that's maybe just a kind of a deceptive answer because I like playing Playmakers. So like even if I'm playing Karma, I still want to make plays. But um, yeah, I think it's just really important to be able to have that eye for the play. Okay. Second question is from Alunum Anthony, and they ask, I play with my abilities on ASDF instead of QWER. Which is the best position for your hands? I have no idea, but I have played on ASDF uh, from like the beginning of time, ever since I was a CS 1.6 player all the way into World of Warcraft. Um, uh, when I was playing Red Alert, Command and Conquer, where you could rebind your keys, I rebound them all to that position. In StarCraft 2, you, you couldn't rebind it first. So, like, I used the default, like, Brood War key bindings, and then I switched them when you could rebind and put them all, like, where I was using them in World of Warcraft and, of course, in League of Legends. Now I have copied what the pros do, and I've moved my hands up to QWVR, but I don't like it very much, and I might go back later. So I would recommend do what is best for you. Make sure that you can do, like, as much as possible with your fingers and that they're as little strain as possible. I think the keyboard position has a lot, and, and height, has, and where you're sitting and how you're sitting, has a lot more to do than, like, where your, your fingers are on ASDF for CF or QW. That's kind of a personal motor memory thing. Okay, third question is from Gold Sniper. They ask, I want to start a road to challenger program. What advice or tips can you give me to help me climb? Uh, master a single role, master a single champ. Use it in your marketing and your promotion. Be like, oh, I'm one tricking this champ. And then find out how to do cool stuff with them. Do funny things like take them into different situations. Let's say you're just playing Azir like Soren did one time. Uh, Bjergsen on Team Solo Mid and he just like played it in the jungle and he played it in the top lane and he played it as AD carry and he played it as support like he just wanted to practice his ear so he played it in whatever role he got it'll really help your marketing a lot and it'll give you an excuse to be an entertainer when you're doing this um, and okay if you really just want to like not stream and you just want to climb to challenger 
then the important thing is to climb until you start to slow down and then stop and rest and let everything kind of sit and level up your play like outside of the game. Think about what you learned over the last three weeks, why you were climbing so fast. Try to think about why you, it slowed down. Let your bad habits die and then restart with your good habits and do it again. So I recommend like a week break, two week break, maybe like in between when you start to plateau at each moment that you plateau. It's really important to let your bad habits die and refresh your good habits and like keep them. Let me just make sure my video is recording well here. Yep, looks good. Okay. Fourth question from Stephen Andy Smith. Wow, that is a very specific Twitter name. Uh, and they ask, he asks, I guess I know it's a guy. Uh, I hope, Stephen, that you're not a girl so that I haven't offended you. Uh, I climb especially fast after I take a long break from league, two to three months. I can pass divisions I was pretty stuck in Y. Wow, okay, so that was a serendipitous question because I just talked about this in my last question. Uh, when you take a break, your good habits and your bad habits die away. But the bad habits are the ones you train the most when you're bad at the game. If you think about it, like when you're bad at League of Legends, 90% of what you do is incorrect. So you're just letting those bad habits die away. And then when you restart, you know, you're adding, you're trying to keep the good habits and you're intentionally trying to improve them. So you add a little bit more to it. Uh, when you're really good at the game, you know, maybe only like 60% of, 40% uh, of the stuff you do is like a bad habit. So, uh, the breaks can be shorter, or you can like wean out bad habit piece by piece. But when you're bad in League of Legends, you take a break and there's like hundreds and hundreds of bad habits that you kind of just let die off. And, and then you can rebuild from, from scratch, which is nice. So that is uh, what I recommend. That is the only way I was able to switch my, fix my swimming technique. I swam for 19 years almost straight through, uh, and I had a flaw in my technique that was causing me to have a chronic injury. I took... Um, 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, I took four years off, and when I restarted I was able to actually fix my swimming technique, but before that I was not able to because I didn't take a long enough break to like let my brain forget the bad habits so that I could relearn it like intentionally. Okay, question number five. In Silver 2, trying for gold, but my unranked friend always asks me to play normal with him. How can I compromise with no free time? And this question is from Craig. A lot of A's in there. This is a really bad question for me because I am super, super bad at this. I, most of the time, am super selfish and I just want to play ranked with me and I don't have any time for my friends. And that's bad. So I would say, look at your values. Who are you? What do you want? What do you like? And be brutally honest. Are you that kind of person that like appreciates that friendship, wants to build that friendship, wants to have fun in the game, wants to help them have fun in the game? Then sacrifice and do it. If you're not the kind of person, if you know that you're really selfish and you don't really care about this friendship and you don't really care about building friendships and it's not a really big deal or you'll do it somewhere else, then that's just that's the way it is. Then you just uh, you don't sacrifice and you don't build up the friendship and it doesn't happen there and you do it in other ways or you don't do it at all. Okay, and the last question, number six, from Beaker Boy, and he or she asks, I'm going to guess actually it's a he, it's the name Boy. Uh, how do you feel about the direction League of Legends is currently going in? Can you make a prediction how long it will last? I feel really good about the direction League of Legends is going in, um, as I have for the last six years. I think it's been ever since I discovered League of Legends in 2012, I guess that was four years ago, uh, I thought almost every decision that they made was uh, fundamentally aligned with what I would want to see for the development of sport. and. I have no idea how long it will last because we're just getting into the era of like infinite games, games where they don't go out of date because you just keep updating them. And like you look at the graphics from, you know, four years ago, it's not even the same game as it is now. So I don't really know, but I do know this. League of Legends is not a cultural phenomena. It's not defined by culture like baseball is or football or these like sports that your father teaches you when you're growing up in the backyard kind of thing. Although it might become that. Maybe. League of Legends is at the end of the day a market-driven uh, game. Meaning that it's like for-profit. It's not non-for-profit, it's not cultural. It is a for-profit company uh, with leaders making decisions about the direction that the product is going in. Therefore, it will obey market sources. And so as soon as something comes along that's better than League of Legends, 
with leadership that is better than League of Legends leadership, then it's over. That's just how the market works. Like the market does not care if you love something, it doesn't care if you like something, it doesn't care about all of these like emotions that we have towards our companies or towards our favorite product or whatever. The market is very ruthless and just if it's if it's uh, if it's going to win, it's going to win. If it's going to lose, it's going to lose. So when somebody decides they they can beat League of Legends and they have all the com thing ducks in a row to do that, um, and they're able to outsell them and out uh, you know develop them and out design them and out market them and out lead them with their company, which by the way that's the big thing with uh, with a company this size is the leadership. Um, so that's going to be a challenge because I think League of Legends leadership is clearly doing a really good job. They're sh pooping on all the competition. Um, once that comes along, it's just going to be it's going to be over. There's, there's no way to save it. Now, uh, look at IBM. I mean, they got beat, and then now they're still around. They kind of adapted. They aren't as, as dominant as they were before, but they're still you know a force. So uh, it's a market. These things can happen, but I can't really make a prediction on how long it will last because I just don't feel comfortable betting on the economy. Like, I'm not a stock uh, company analyst, you know what I mean? Uh, that's not my strength. If it was my strength, I'd go over and I'd bet on the stock market, I'd make millions of dollars. Okay, that's all the questions I want to answer today. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next show. Be sure to check out my website, mindgames.gg. Down below, I put three really important links below this video. Three super important links, okay? The first one is to my training program very inexpensive right now because I'm still adding in some things that were lost from previous iteration on my website. This is the third version of it. It's called the Mindfulness Acceptance Commitment Program. I highly recommend you check it out. It's just like 47 videos hosted on my website as a course. You buy access, you get lifetime permanent access forever. And as I upgrade it and, and improve it, uh, you keep access. And as the price goes up in the future, maybe, maybe, uh, you, you obviously say grandfathered in because you already, you already own it. Uh, it's just like an iPhone app, basically. Only not the kind that they like release version two and then it's like a new app and then they're like, oh, you have to upgrade to the new app and we're not going to add any features to this one anymore and then your phone doesn't support it anymore. Oh my God, I hate that. Uh, okay. Second link is to my mailing list where I share with you like cool stuff that I discover every week. Um, my favorite books, my favorite tools, my favorite resources, my favorite advice, my favorite websites, my favorite videos. And uh, it's kind of like a curated experience on the internet and in the shop, the tech shop or whatever through my eyes. So if you want to enjoy that, then please check it out. And the third link is to the 5-Minute Journal, which is my number one favorite referred product. People ask, what is the one thing that I can do to make the biggest difference in my life? And I tell them my Mac program. And then they say, okay, but I don't want to do your stupid Mac program. And I say, all right, fine, 5-Minute Journal. Uh, and you can you can read about my testimony on that um, on the webpage there. But essentially, like it's a tool that I've used with all the teams I've worked with and that I've used in my own life to great efficacy, and I, and I like it a lot. All right. Ciao. Hey guys, I just want to encourage you to follow me on Snapchat so you can keep track of all of the cool adventures that I have in places like Korea, where we're training right now, and so that you can ask me questions and follow along with kind of my behind the scenes of high performance coaching.